Mother's Day to those of you who are moms or have a mom or all those things. So we're glad you're chosen to join with us. I think it covers everybody, right? When I say that, you either are a mom or had a mom or something. Uh, but what a beautiful day to gather together as we celebrate the Lord and celebrate the moms he's given us. I wanted to start by sharing this, I guess, poem with you. It's from uh, Irma Bombeck. You've probably heard this before, but it says, When God created mothers. When the good Lord was creating mothers, he was into his sixth day of overtime when the angel appeared and said, you're doing a lot of fiddling around on this one. And God said, have you read the specs on this order? She has to be completely washable, but not plastic. Have 180 removable parts, all replaceable. Run off that copy and leftovers. Have a lap that disappears when she stands up. A kiss that can cure anything from a broken leg to a disappointed love affair and six pairs of hands. The angel shook his head slowly and said, six pairs of hands? No way. It's not the hands that are causing me problems, God remarked. It's the three pairs of eyes that mothers have to have. That's on the standard model, asked the angel. God nodded. One pair that sees through closed doors when she asks, what are you kids doing in there when she already knows? Another here in the back of her head that sees what she shouldn't see, but she has to know. And of course, the ones here in front that she can look at a child and he goes up and say, I understand and I love you without as much so much as uttering a word. God, said the angel, touching his sleeve gently, get some rest tomorrow. I can't, said God. I'm so close to creating something so close to myself. Already I have one who heals herself when she's sick, can feed a family of six on one pound of hamburger, and get a nine-year-old to stand in the shower. The angel circled the mother of the model of the mother very slowly. It's too soft, she sighed. But touch, God said excitedly. She can imagine what this mother can do or endure. You can't imagine what this mother can do or endure. Can it think? Not only can it think, but it can reason and compromise, said the creator. Finally, the angel bent over and ran his finger across the cheek. There's a leak, he pronounced. I told you that you guys were trying to put too much into this model. It's not a leak, said the Lord, it's a tear. Well, what's it for? It's for joy, sadness, disappointment, pain, loneliness, and pride. You're a genius, said the angel. Somberly, God said, I didn't put it there. Our mother's fantastic human beings. Praise God for that. As we get started this morning, I just wanted to share a few announcements. Uh, we're, again, we're grateful that you're here today. I wanted to let you know that we are celebrating moms, but if you're not here today, we still want to celebrate you. So just let us know that you're here, and uh, we'll celebrate you later on. Uh, also, we do have our Monday lunch tomorrow for those who are less fortunate from 12 to 1230. We're also going to be doing a baptism service coming up. Our uh, baptism e or the person who wants to be baptized, in other words, uh, has a hurt foot right now, so we're probably going to have to wait a little bit to do that. But if you would like to be baptized, please let me know. So, again, Marysville has graciously uh, given us the option to use their baptismal on a Sunday afternoon coming up. And so, uh, if that's something you've been thinking about, uh, if you have any questions, please let me know, and we'll certainly answer those. Also, we're going to be welcoming some new members in the coming month or so. So, again, if you want to be a new member, please let me know. I think that's all the announcements today. Uh, let's just get started uh, with a word of prayer. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, as we come before you today, we give you great praise. Praise because you are the God of heaven and earth. And within your great plans, Father, you gave us moms. Father, as we pay tribute to moms today, we just pray that each and every one that's here, that's watching our video, would sense your presence and your love. I just come over there right now. Father, we know that they may not be perfect, but they're perfect for us. And so we're grateful. We're grateful for them and for all that you're about to do. Father, as we've gathered today, if there are those with heavy hearts, uh, we lift them to you. We pray especially for those who are missing their moms today. We pray, Lord, that you would just give them that extra grace this morning. Father, thank you for all that you're about to do in the midst of the service today. Amen. Let's sing together. Let's stand together, shall we? And sing, For the Beauty of the Earth. Thank you.
old, old story of Jesus and his love.
as we prepare our hearts for prayer today, we have a lot to thank the Lord for, don't we? Yes. Not only for our mothers, but for the very breath that we breathe. And the fact that God loves us. He knows us by name. He knows all about us. And he still loves us. And as we think, sing the chorus today, let's enter our time of prayer with praise and thanksgiving as we make our petitions known to the Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, I need thee. <laughs> others today who are facing other diseases. There are those that we know that may be facing cancer or other types of diseases. There may be those out there facing the virus still and dealing with those issues. Whatever the case, Lord, if you touch your people physically and provide healing as only you can. Father, today we would pray for those who are struggling mentally, those lost in addiction or locked up inside themselves. May you heal their minds. May you give them release and strength. May they see Jesus in their new Father, bless those today who are struggling emotionally, depression, and other things that we face. Bless those who are struggling financially, just need your help. And 
Father, most of all, bless those who are struggling spiritually. Father, as we look around this great big world, as we look around our, our nation and our state and our communities, Father, we see people who are lost. People who don't seem to know Jesus or aren't showing the fruits of the Spirit in ways. People who aren't claiming Jesus as their Savior. Father, we, we love them and we want to care for them and we want to see them come home. Father, would you help us to see them as you see them? Would you help us to love them as only you can, that you might get the glory, that they might come into our family? Father God, we, our hearts break for those who don't know you. In fact, at times we don't understand how they even make it through. How blessed we are to know you, not only as our God, but as our Savior. Father God, today we pray for those who serve us. We pray for our police officers, our firefighters, our EMTs, the doctors and nurses on call. We pray, Lord, for all those who have been on the front lines and continue to be so in today's times. And pray your protection and your hand upon them. We also pray for those brave men and women who are in the service and serving their country. Pray specifically for those moms who are far away today from their children who are the start of the And those moms who are missing their sons and daughters who are far away in service of our country. Father, may today be a day of peace, an opportunity for families to come in. Father, we thank you that we can always come to you and trust you, that you're going to take care of everything. And so today, Lord, we bring before you the needs of our church. house of worship, Lord, to reach out to the community around us. We simply love people as you are. Father, today as we come before you, we again place our hands before you. We thank you, O oh God, that you have a plan. We thank you, O oh God, that your plan is coming forth as we're obedient to you. And we give you great praise. Father, we all claim to understand all things. Bibles to Genesis chapter 2. I want to read to you, actually starting at verse 15 today. Genesis chapter 2, starting at verse 15. And if you can, please stand for the reading of God's Word. Again, Genesis chapter 2, beginning in verse 15. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make it helper, helper suitable for him. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the beasts of the field and the birds of the air. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was his name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds of the air, and the beasts of the field. But for Adam, no suitable help was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and closed up the place of flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man and brought it to her, or brought her to the man. The man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. The man and his wife were both naked, and they felt no shame. 
Father God, as we break this bread of life as you've laid upon my heart this morning, speak to us new and afresh about the wonderfulness of our moms. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There's an old, older song, I shouldn't say old song, but an older song by a country group called Lone Star, and it's called Mr. Mom. You may have heard it before, but, but I want to have a play for you this morning. This is a special video put together by a family uh, to kind of carry out these words. But this was an order to be sung. that way to you at home with your kids running around. I know certainly at our house there's days where it's, you know, it just feels like all day long you're going and when you're done it still looks the same as when you started, right? Uh, Stacy likes to say that it's great to have two kids but when you have three you're outnumbered and that's when life gets hard. So uh, we, we certainly see it at our house as well. Uh, you know, moms put a ton of effort into their families and never seem to get the credit they deserve. Of course, we've all heard to the jokes about moms who sit around and watch soap operas and eat bonbons. But I think, as this video has shown, that's not really true. A mom's work is never done. Think about it. Moms are the ones who are always there to comfort and support when times are tough. Moms are the ones that give us the most praise, no matter how well we do. Moms are the ones we can count on when we can't count on anyone else. And you probably notice that it's generally moms that we give the most attention to when we get older. Think about purchasing gifts for special days. Moms might get flowers or candy or jewelry. On Father's Day, dads might be lucky to get a tie. A little joke about a kid who goes to dad and says, Hey, dad, I, I want to get you something for Father's Day. You know, give me five bucks so I can go to the store and get you some candy. 
On the way home, the kid eats half the candy and gives the rest of the box to dad for, for Father's Day. According to the National Retail Federation, we spend about $25 billion for gifts for mom on Mother's Day compared to $16 billion for gifts for dad. So there's a great difference there. Either way, though, today we're here to celebrate our moms, to pay tributes to moms everywhere. So whether your mom was here today, somewhere else around the country or the world, or even in heaven, let's take some time to celebrate our moms as a gift to us all. Let's begin with moms are a gift from God to their husbands. According to verse 20 from our text, but no suitable helper was found for Adam. Does it strike anyone else thought that almost sounds that as if women were an afterthought of God? If that were true, then the idea that God looked at man and realized he could do better would be correct. It's not funny. Uh, sometimes they just fall flat. But there is this reality that, that, that people sometimes act like, hey, you know, God created man and saw that there were some mistakes, and so he created woman to fix all those things. But the, but the truth is that women were always part of God's plan. Women and moms were always part of God's creation. I sometimes think because God knew man so well, he gave God the opportunity to be by himself. You know, with, as men, sometimes we get this idea that, that we can do it all, and, and so God brings out the animals and has a name them, and, and God has to do all these things before there's this realization that it's not complete, that he needs it. And God brings forth women. Someone to love him, someone to support him, become a helpmate and a partner, someone that completes him, if you will. I've heard it said that, that we read this passage of God made man in his own image, uh, but I've heard it said that maybe the combination of a man and woman coming together is the completeness of God's image. That God has all these attributes and wants to bring them to us, to bring them to the families he creates. The woman came from a man's rib. The reason it came from a man's rib, they say, is not from his feet so he could walk on her, and not from his head to be superior, but from the side to be equal. Under the arm to be protected, and next to the heart to be loved. The fact is, today we hear lots of these things about how everybody's equal. And I would contend to you that we are not equal. Now, we are equal in, in, in our value, we are equal in, in what we can do, but God has created us to complement each other. God has created us to take care of each other. When we're blessed to have a spouse, when, amen, when we're blessed to have a woman beside us, it's our job to take care of them, to support them, to lift them up and uh, what they're doing, but to provide for them and to watch over them. God has given us responsibility. And I know not all families can look this way. And, and there's different things that take place. And, and I'm not taking away from that. But in the ideal of God's creation, he created us to be together as man and woman. Your wife is a gift to you. Too often we treat our gifts the same, don't we? We get something for Christmas or we get something for our birthday. And for a while we, we, we play with it or we, we, we use it and, and, we, and we do these things. And after a time we just kind of start setting this up. It's important in our life. We, we start to take for granted and we start to think in other ways. And yet God calls us to look at our wives as a special gift. God calls us to, to understand that they are a helpmate to us. That he's, he's brought them to us for a purpose. You know, the other thing about wives that we think about is that our wives bear our children. Aren't you glad as guys that we don't have that responsibility? It would probably kill us, right? But yet, God's brought them to us. To wrap our arms around them and to love us. The second thing moms are give to are to their kids. In the Ten Commandments found in Exodus 20, it states, Honor your father and mother and your mother so that you may live along in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Obviously, God's not messing around when it comes to moms. And in Psalm 139, 13, it states, For you created my inmost being, you did me together in my mother's womb. Let's face it. As kids, mom knows us best, right? Today's dads often work hard to get to know the baby as best they can. 
dads talk to the mom's belly and maybe they read to mom's belly and, and do whatever they can to make that connection. But when the baby is born, who does the baby know? The baby knows mom. The baby's comforted by mama's voice and by her heartbeat and, and by those touch. Today's dads are more uh, hands-on when it comes to raising the kids, but we're still not on the same level as mom. In my house, you know, when the kids are smaller and they get hurt and they want a Band-Aid on every owie, and I'm thinking I should buy stock in Band-Aids. And, you know, as, as a dad, I'm thinking, hey, if it ain't bleeding, suck it up. Rub some dirt on it go play again. <laughs> Stacy, on the other hand, is a great mom. And out of this, she helps them find a Band-Aid if we have them. She gives them magic kisses and holds them until they feel better. Moms are a gift because they nurture us and they help us. By the way, do you ever notice who gets the most credit for parenting? How many times have you seen a pro football player score a touchdown and think they're dads? And who do you call first when there's good news in your life, mom or dad? Our moms are just that more natural relationship we have. Our moms are the ones that, that we just felt the love. We always know dad loves us, and many of us have great dads who, who show us and tell us their love, but we just really feel that moms. Yet the dad knows there's some who lost their moms earlier or separated from their moms. Or maybe your mom wasn't the ideal mom. But God still is there. God still gives them as a gift. And many people have received a second mom. Or more moms to help them out. The bond between a mother and a child is the greatest bond known to man. Short may be of our bond with God. Moms are also a gift from God to themselves. In Jeremiah 29, we, we read this all the time. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you enough to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Do you know what I think the hardest job in the world may be? Is to be a mom. In Genesis 3, after Adam and Eve's sin, God said to Eve, I will greatly increase your pains in childbearing. With pain, with pain you will give... I'm sorry. I will greatly increase your pain in childbearing, but the pain you will give birth to children. Again, as we read this, we notice that it was always God's plans for women to be moms. It wasn't as if that there was some point in sin that God decided, okay, I'm going to punish you by being a mom. No, it's more simply that maybe the sin multiplied the pain. The reality is, though, is that this is who God created us. God created men and women to come together to have families and, and for women to have this nurturing spirit. Before you were born, God had a plan for women to be moms. To take on the responsibility of nurturing and loving and caring for the next generation so they could carry on his, so carry out his plan of creation. As moms, you've probably been given the greatest responsibility in the world. And although all moms are special, some of you moms are an extra special component about you that you become mom to kids that aren't even your own. Others have become like second moms to kids who just need an extra little love. Whatever the case, you willfully chose to take these children on and love them as your own. Moms are something that we should celebrate all year long. At Thanksgiving, we talk about the idea that, hey, we should be most thankful today and maybe we gather together and we celebrate what we're thankful for for the year. And as pastors, we often mention, hey, let's be thankful every day. But maybe there's a sense that every day should be Mother's Day. As husbands, maybe Mother's Day, maybe every day should be, we should be honoring our wife as the mother of our kids. As children, maybe every day should be the day we're honoring our moms for the things they do for us. But the truth is, life is short. And moms are gone quickly. Truth is, it's hard for those who stay behind, who feel like orphans or feel like they've just been left. But we have good news today to share. And that good news we have is that someday those of us who know Jesus will all be together again. And although we don't know what heaven will really be like, and uh, I mean, we all have our ideas, I believe we will know who people are. And we'll once and again be united for all eternity with our moms. Praise God for that. God loves moms. God loves all people. We know that. His love doesn't change. But God's 
love for moms is special because he's given them this responsibility of nurturing the kids along the way. As dads, we, we have our own responsibilities to provide and protect and these things, but really I feel like the moms are the special ones. You know, when I was younger, I used to think it was pretty tough to be a parent. You know, your kids are little and they're running around the house and you're trying to keep up with them. And, and maybe even think, hey, I can't wait till they grow up a little bit. Can't wait till they, they get a little bigger, you know, so they can, you know, take care of themselves. Uh, yesterday I was feeding uh, Susie, you know, the baby, and she just started eating. And I had it everywhere, let's just be honest. There was food all over her face at one point in time. And uh, the bib now has to be bleached or something because I got so much, you know, food on the bib. And there's just that idea that wouldn't it be great if they were a little older? And I get a little older, maybe they're Katie and Emma and Brian's age, they're 9, 10, 11, 12, and they're like, okay, well, you know, they're doing better now, and you know, if they just get a little bit older, they're going to be even more self-sufficient, and, and maybe we'll stay tonight and get away a little bit more, or, you know, those type of things, and, and then they become teenagers, and you love them to death, and sometimes death seems like it's about to come, and, um, and yet, you know, you, you still love them, and you think, okay, well, they're going to be adults one day, and we'll get through this teenage time, and then they become adults. And I don't know about you when that happens with your kids, but, but you wake up one day and go, this is the hardest time of all. Now our influence over them is much less. We have to depend upon the influence, that we, the training that we gave them growing up, that as we stand back and, and watch them and, and want to help them and, 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 and lead them and love them, they are becoming their own person. And they make tough decisions that are hard on us, like when a son moves away to Colorado to go to school. Or they join the military, and, and even though that's a valiant thing, that we have to say goodbye and, and love them from afar. Or maybe they're just making decisions that are not the decisions we want them. One fact is true: is we never stop being a parent. And as hard as that is for us dads, it's even harder for the moms. You know, when we look at God or we think about God, I think God feels the same way about us in our moms. I think sometimes we want to put on God just the masculine components of who God is and, and, and treat him just as our daddy, but, but God has that nurturing about him. God wants to scoop us up in our arms. God wants to restore us to himself. God's plans are always that his creation would come back to him. He never gives up on us. Just like our moms. You know, in our country today, there's talk at different times about the death penalty. I, I read a story this week about, you know, uh, some people that were exonerated after the fact. And, uh, and what always comes to mind when I see these cases is, what about the families? I know that this person has been convicted of a horrible crime that should never have happened, but they have, most likely have a mom out there. Maybe a dad out there who's, who's, who lost them and cares for them. You know, in the same way, that's how God feels about us. That there's really nothing that we could have, we could have done this far that God would say, I've done. I want to throw my hands up. God is always about restoring his creation to himself. God is always about bringing us back into the fold and welcoming us. The devil is the one who wants to stop you. The devil is the one who wants to say to you, hey, this isn't okay. You know, God will never accept you. You're a, a bad thing. And yet God is the one saying, no, come back to me. I think as dad, sometimes we have more of the, the mentality of, of the son, of the lost son, and the parable of the lost son of Luke 15, of, Hey, maybe you gotta fix things first. You know, that's what the son thought would have to happen. And he'll go back and make some retribution and try to fix some things, and the dad runs out and wraps his arm around and says, Welcome home. That's what moms do. Doesn't matter where we go or what we've done, moms are always ready to welcome us home. So moms, on behalf of men and women or men and children everywhere, I want to say thank you. Thank you for all the love that you've given to us. Thank you that you haven't given up on us. 
Thank you that you support us and care for us. And thank you even for the discipline. We know that's the hardest part. At the same time, today, we want to give God all the praise for our lives. You see, without God, there would be no one. Obviously, there would be no us. But the whole idea that we come from and look from comes from God. Today, I want to encourage you to take a few extra minutes in person, in a phone call if you have to, but to give your mom what she desires. You know what your mom desires most? Is you. Sometimes we try to go out of our way to think of what elaborate gift we can give to our moms. And what they simply want is time. What they simply want is a few more minutes to be with you. I shared three or four months ago that uh, a gal, a, a young man in my, my last church, um, passed away. He's the same age as Bethany. Um, we're still not sure exactly what happened. Uh, we're still working on that. But every once in a while, I, I, I spent a few weeks conversing back and forth with mom and sending her you know, special prayers and some folks to help her. And yet even this week, I've seen some posts and, and I got a text that how hard the mother's day was going to be without her child. Before it's too late, our moms are going to be gone. For some of us, for some of you, maybe your moms are already gone. And how we wish for, how she wished for one more phone call, one more walk through the door, one more moment together with her son, and how we wish for that. Let's not waste another minute. Let's give moms the do they deserve. Let's honor moms today and honor God in the process. But doing that today, we want to take a moment and honor moms uh, with a little token of our appreciation. If you are a mom, would you, if you can, stand up and come up and stand in front of the altar? And this would include moms who are moms to other people's kids or... Well, actually, all the, yeah, all the ladies come on up, because you've been a mom to somebody, I'm sure. Um, I think I can do this without the rubber. And turn her face to the congregation, if you will. These are the moms of our church and how we love and appreciate them so much. Let's just pray for them right now. So if you're out in the congregation, guys, let's put our hands forward. I wish we could you know, touch each one and pray for each one, but let's just push our hands towards our mom and let's pray together a special blessing. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, as we come to you today, as we pay tribute to our moms, how grateful we are for 
for each one of these ladies here today. Father, we know that your love was with inside them. We know that through your love, you used them to touch not only their own kids, but the lives of the kids around them and the lives of the kids who are true. Father, today we pray that they would feel immensely blessed to be a part of your family and blessed by you for the work they do. May they also know our love and appreciation for them. And we pray, oh God, that today would be a day filled with joy in their hearts. May you fill their minds with memories of many times spent with their own kids and kids they've been with. And we'll give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's put our mouth on that. You may be seated. I'm going to invite Pastor Campbell to come back, and we're going to sing our closing song today. Unspeakable and full of glory. It is joy unspeakable, full of glory. Would you stand with me as we sing the first and the last verses, please?